In today's video, we're going to take a look at my friend's X800. Thanks to Trevor for lending this to me for a review. So this X800 takes a 2650 battery instead of an 18650 battery, and that just means it's a little bigger and it uses a larger battery. The 26 just means it's 26 millimeters in diameter, and 650 means it's 650 millimeters in length. So the 18650 is just 18 millimeters in diameter and the same length, so it's just a little narrower. If you want a slimmer flashlight, like the Convoy S2 Plus, it uses the 18650. It's narrower and it can fit in your pocket really easily. So after testing the power draw, it pulls about 1.4 amps and that means it has about 588 lumens peak which is not very much and the Convoy S2 Plus puts out about 1000 lumens so if you're looking for a brighter flashlight go with the Convoy S2 Plus. If you're looking for a zoomable flashlight though you can just search uh, the internet for XML zoomable and you'll find a bunch of flashlights that you can purchase or you can check the description for a bunch of links to my recommendations. I've tested a lot of lights so I know which ones kind of work and which ones don't. This one costs around 35 to 40 dollars US but that's because you're paying a premium for the output. It can put out 8,000 lumens plus, and that's a very powerful flashlight. The only problem is it uses a lot of battery power, and its runtime is probably 30 minutes on high and 2 hours on low. This one has a pretty wide distribution, and it's the same XMO LED in there. This is the Convoy S2 Plus. It's got a bigger and brighter beam. So there's more total light coming out of the Convoy S2 Plus. And the Convoy S2 Plus is definitely my number one recommendation. You can find a similar kit to this X800, or you can just buy the flashlight separately. They won't come with the case or charger or batteries, but I can put a bunch of links in the description for the batteries and chargers that I purchased and use daily. I'll also put the pricing in the description so you can check that out as well. Okay, so let's take a detailed look into this kit and see what it's all about. So the first thing we're going to do is test the X800's light output against the Convoy S2 Plus. And we'll use the Luxo meter here. The X800 gets 28 lux. And the Convoy S2 Plus gets 36 lux. So it's double the power and it's probably double the light output. So the X800 definitely doesn't produce the amount of light that a high power flashlight does. And if you want lots of light output, get the Convoy S2 Plus. And if you're really keen and you're into modifying flashlights, you can add more current limiters to there and pretty much double the power. Make it 2000 lumens, 20 watts, easily. A lot of flashlights out there say they have 2000 lumens, but be careful, they're probably only running at 5 watts. So don't trust any of those listings that say they're 2200 lumens. Because by pulling 5 watts, you're not going to be pushing 2000 lumens. That would require an efficacy of over 400 lumens per watt. So if we take a look at the beam shot of the X800, it's just a normal zoomable flashlight and produces a uniform circle. So that's good for working on your engine of your car in close spaces, but it's horrible for walking down any trails or the sidewalk because you can't really see down the trail or off to the sides too well. The cutoff is too quick and you won't see much. And then when you try to zoom in, you lose two thirds of the amount of light and it's a sharp cutoff and all you can see is just a little square or tiny circle. So it's not very useful to use that for walking down trails or sidewalks, but it's great if you got to zoom out and work on your engine bay. I prefer a reflector based flashlight like the Convoy S2 Plus, and as you can see it works a lot better in sidewalks, and trails, and you can just dim it when you got to use it under your hood or when you're working close to yourself. So the reflector based Convoy S2 Plus is a much better light if you're looking for that kind of distribution. But if you want the uniform circle, then go ahead and get a zoomable flashlight. But I don't use the Zoomable anymore because I like the Convoy S2 Plus for everyday uses. It just works better for me. Now we're going to take the X800 apart and see what's inside it. So let's take a quick look at the driver here. It's a cheap driver and it uses current limiting resistors. Here's four of them. And the problem with that is that they heat up. And when it produces heat, that's really bad for a flashlight. Those resistors might burn out, the driver might burn out, or it might degrade your LED. So it's not a great driver for this flashlight, and it's just going to waste your energy, create a lot of heat, and not push a lot of current to the LED. So that's probably why it's at 5 watts. If you replace this driver with a better driver, you'll get a better light. But this thing's not going to be good for 10 watts, so you shouldn't do that anyways. The driver's dimming for medium and low is also very bad because it flickers. And that just means the pulse width modulation frequency is low and it's not very good for working under your engine when it's on because the fan of the radiator is going to be spinning and it's going to stop that motion and it's going to be dangerous to use. So be careful if you're using this light around moving machinery, fans and stuff. It does have five modes, high, medium, low, 
strobe and SOS. And there's one good thing about this flashlight and driver, and that is that the driver defaults back to high after you have it off for five seconds. So it's not memory, but it's more of a five second default. If you look at the build quality of this flashlight, it's actually pretty good for a zoomable. And I wouldn't say it's the best, but it's actually acceptable because there's a small block for the LED to sit on and that allows the LED to push its heat away into that block and then if you put some thermal grease between the block and the body, it'll pull the heat away into the body. They didn't include the thermal grease between the block and the body, but that's probably okay because they only run it at 5 watts. But if you add some thermal grease in there, it's not going to hurt anything and, and it's just going to help push the heat into the body and away from the LED. So it'll help the LED maintain its lumen output a little longer. But it's not critical since the LED is only getting 5 watts. The case that comes with the X800 is not waterproof, but it's fine for holding everything together. It's not as good as a pelican case, which is crush proof and waterproof. If you need something that's really strong, get a pelican case, throw your equipment in there, flashlights, whatever. That'll keep it dry, keep it safe, and when you need it, it's there. Now looking at the charger, we've taken that apart, taken a close look at it, and it's a very poorly made charger. In fact, the one I got was missing the bottom piece that protects you from touching the transformer. So this is actually dangerous and exposes you to dangerous 120 volt since the transformer coils are sitting right there. And when you push down on the battery slider, that actually can come in contact with it, and that may expose you to 120 volts. So, so you gotta be very careful with this charger, and I wouldn't use it if you can help it. I used it once and it actually pushed the battery to 4.28 volts. So I don't think this is a very reliable charger. You should only ever push lithium ions to 4.2 volts, otherwise they may explode and go into a thermal runaway, which you see in this video here. I pushed it beyond 4.2 volts and that's what happened. For chargers, I recommend the SoShine E4S because it doubles as a portable USB charger and also you can charge your batteries up with micro USB or USB. It's slow, but it'll do it overnight, no problem. If you want an actual full-size charger, then I'd recommend the Nightcore D4 or the Xtar VC4, which is also pretty good. But check out the pricing and the options for them and see which one suits you best. Now I checked out the battery that they sent and something that's 26650 I'd expect 5 amp hours out of but it only provided 2676 milliamp hours so it's only as good as a mediocre 18650. You can actually get an 18650 that's 3500 milliamp hours for pretty cheap and they have the Panasonic, the Sanyo, the LG and they're only about 6 bucks each so definitely just buy one of those. It'll give you 30% more runtime, and it'll be in a smaller package, like the Convoy S2 Plus. The 26650 is actually pretty big, and they don't have high capacity cells in that because it's not a very common cell size. So you're best off going with the 18650s because you're getting 3.5 amp hours out of that, and it's much smaller. So in conclusion, the X800 gets the job done and is an acceptable XML zoomable flashlight. But check out my recommendations in the description and the prices that I put there and see what works best for you. So if you've watched this full video, that means you've done your research, you know what's out there. And if you want to learn more about flashlights and stuff, I'll put some of my videos in the description and you can check those out as well. I go more into color temperature, types of LEDs, what you expect out of them, the current, voltage, different little drivers, pulse with modulation, supercharging them, all those little things. So I hope that helps and thanks for watching. So let's take a look at the X800 and see what it's got. You can actually unscrew it by twisting quickly on it. If you must use the charger against my recommendations, definitely try to secure that plate by cutting a notch. It usually sits in this notch, but I cut a notch up here 
and then jam that piece right into that notch. That'll keep it in place and won't allow it to slide downwards to the transformer there. And then you can put some black tape around that transformer and that'll insulate it. So this is CSA listed electrician's tape, good for 600 volts insulation and it can provide you some protection if you wrap that transformer with it. So that's the best we can do. Also you want to make a plastic plate that goes there as well and wrap that transformer just in case. It uses the 26650 battery which is uh, bigger than this one. So this is an 18650, 18 millimeters in diameter by 650 millimeters in length. This is on 26 millimeters in diameter and it's the same length, different diameter. That gives it more volume, more energy, and theoretically this thing should hold up to 5,000 milliamp hours, as you can see there. There's no brand on this one. I believe it is a protected cell, because I can feel the protection circuit at the bottom. And as you can see, there is a strip of conductor right there that provides a positive power so that the circuitry can work, keep it from over temp, over current, all that stuff. It comes with a AAA battery holder and that allows you to use just standard AAAs. If you're gonna leave it in the car or anything for a long time, don't use alkalines. They do uh, overheat and then they release acid. These new ones are supposed to be Duralock and Energizer has that same type of thing as well and it's not supposed to leak acid for 10 years, but you gotta be careful with it because if you leave it in your car over extended periods of time, it probably could leak within a couple years. So that goes in positive first. Obviously a lithium ion is going to last longer for you. It has lower discharge. You also don't want to leave lithium ion batteries in your car. They can explode as well if they overheat. They don't explode normally, but if there's a manufacturing defect in the battery, it could explode if it overheats just slightly up to 100 degrees Celsius or something. There's no definite number for it, but they've exploded, so people are aware of that. This flashlight has five modes, as you've probably read. High, medium, low, strobe, and SOS. You can switch between the modes by turning it off for four seconds, up to four seconds, and switching it back on. If you wait longer than four seconds, it's gonna to default to high. So that's how the modes work in this. The last one I got actually had infinite cycle, so you'd always have to cycle through all the modes. This flashlight's pretty good, so it's always gonna come back on to high. If you turn it back on within four seconds, it goes to medium, low, strobe, and then SOS. It's a reverse clicky button, so you can also change modes by holding it halfway down, that turns it off, and then let it go again. So you can switch modes without clicking. So that's a quick way to switch modes. And if you don't like to push down halfway, you can just fully click it off as well. Just takes longer. We'll measure the beam angle and the field angle of this flashlight and see what it's at. Does it look like the field angle is as wide as the Convoy S2 Plus? Let's check that out. So it's just a little bit shy of the Convoy S2 Plus, but not by much. It's only a tiny bit shy of the Convoy S2 Plus, which is 73 degrees. So it's probably 70 degrees, this thing. As you can see, if I put it in the exact same spot, the Convoy S2 Plus has a tiny bit more out to this side and this side. It's not a significant amount. What you see when you zoom in is the square of the XML Cree LED. The XML is actually version 1. There's an XML 2, which is brighter, and it's about 16% brighter. It's a better LED to get if you want high power, so go with something like the Convoy S2 Plus. This reflector is actually very efficient, so it punches most of the light out the front. If you're looking for the most powerful flashlight that you can get in a small handheld form factor, definitely check out the Convoy S2 Plus. I've got other review videos for it, so you can check those out. This one has eight 7135 current limiters in there, so it puts out a lot of power, 2.8 amps, and it's probably the brightest flashlight you're ever gonna get.